they've been bees on the farm for 35 years. At the end of this last winter, unfortunately our last hive died out. And I might be quite near the truth when I say that some years, 50% of colonies in Britain die out. What really got me interested in bees was just seeing the lack of bees. I've got an apple orchard down in Devon. They used to be intense buzz. You could lie on the grass and just hear the noise of the bees above. And one year, they just weren't there. At the tops, we had six hives, and we used the national beehive system. What I'll do is I'll show you. I'll take the hive apart, bit by bit. What you have is what's called the brood chamber. They land on the board here, and then they'll walk in there, and they'll come up into the hive. We have what's called a queen excluder, then the first super. And this is a second super. That one's got some of the old cells that have been built. And then at the top of that would be this board to feed the bees a sugar solution. We put a mouse guard on the entrance. The lid, which sits on top, and because we live in a windy spot, in the winter we used to put a great big concrete block on top to stop it blowing away. My approach is to stop the honey being the driver and think that we want bees as pollinators. Bees don't necessarily want to be on the ground, on the damp ground in square boxes, like filing cabinets and so that was the impulse to do something different. This is larch I got from a local sawmill and it's about three foot long and about 18 inches diameter. We want the wall thickness to give insulation to the bee and so that's about four inches. So the hole is about between sort of 10 and 12 inches seems to be what the bees like. This chainsaw takes out a core and then the rest of it is just done with a long gouge on about a six foot pole. And do you put home for let sign up? I do have a little few tricks. This is, you'll know, this is propolis. So I rub propolis on the inside and around the holes here. Yep. And really just, I just want to get it to smell of bee. But propolis, as well as being a glue, so they'll seal any cracks and things, it's also got fantastic medicinal value. So it's the, basically the bee's immune system. So it's antiviral and antimicrobial. And the bees create, if they're healthy, they create like this cloud of propolis in the air and that stops any mold growth. Because if you imagine there's, there could be 50,000 breathing yeah. organisms in there. So this is really essential. We kept bees for about 30 years. We started off and it was the days when there was very little disease and you really didn't have to interfere with the bees a lot. And then, of course, Varroa came in and they became much more vulnerable and colonies started being seriously affected by this horrible little mite that saps them, really, and kills them eventually. We've got trouble with the disease which is transmitted by Varroa mite. That came in the 80s into Britain and that's really had a devastating effect on, on beekeepers' hives. It used to be pretty relaxed until then. It's become a less joyful occupation for the traditional beekeeper as far as I'm concerned because there's always, are they going to get disease? Are they going to come through the winter? How do you treat them? We're treating bees using more treatments and we never seem to be able to get rid of this mite. So bees are under a lot of stress. So I think the other thing that of course has changed is we haven't got the flowers that we used to have. Compared to a hundred years ago, we're living in like a desert. So that's had a huge effect on, on bee health, I think. It's really my whole objective is to just get the bees vigorous and strong again. That's a nice butterfly. This is normally my secret ingredient that I bring along. And this is some comb from a, a freedom hive, another log hive. So for instance, this is worker comb. It's not like foundation where it's stuck in a frame. This is free to move and vibrate, which is important for the bees when they communicate. They're also free to build 
This comb, this is drone comb. You can see the difference in cell size. Conventional beekeepers wouldn't like to see this because the males aren't making them honey. But in a wild colony, it's about between 17 and 20% of the hive will be for the males. As well as pollination that we all want, they're actually producing strong males and strong genetic stock, which they make with other bees and get things better, healthier. Yeah, it's a beautiful smell. The whole philosophy about this is you've got to let the bee be the bee. The whole philosophy about conventional beekeeping is you've got to stop the bee being a bee. In fact, you want to suppress swarming. So you're, you're picking out queen cells, you're splitting them. Whereas swarming is a fundamental urge of a bee and it's got a cleansing nature where they have to start again. So good disease control. This will make the bees think that there's been bees in before. We're going to just nail them into the top. Often the bees, when they come in, they'll rip all that comb off, but it's a kind of fresh coffee kind of thing. Yeah. So this is essential oil called lemongrass oil. And for centuries we've been using this to attract swarms. Basically the same chemicals as scout bees give off to attract other bees to the hive. And we just put a few dabs around in the entrance and that will be enough. The other thing I do is I rub some propolis around the holes and that just gives the smell again, mm -hmm. just giving... You know, in a modern hive, we design the doors to be like our doors on a house down at the bottom. Yeah. But with these, the building comb off the top yeah. and their brood will be up here. It makes sense, they go for the shortest distance to come in with their pollen and nectar. So this one will be active all the time, but also the carbon dioxide sinking to the bottom. So you'll, you'll see the bees down the bottom hole fanning. What happens in the winter, they'll get some propolis and then close the doors and just leave a bee space. Have you got a specific place in mind? Really, I'm looking for somewhere that's facing south. It's a bit sheltered from whatever the old problem with. This tree was straighter, so it looks like south's there. The bees have evolved over millions of years. That's where the scouts are still looking. 15, 20 foot up where those branches come out. They're not looking on the ground. We're near the sea and a lot of short trees because obviously the wind exposed. There were only about three trees on this 70 acre plot that jumped out at me. And this one was sycamore, still flowering, so bees are still going to it. And it was next to a bird cherry and it was next to some hawthorn and it was next to a lime so there were like good key marker trees and it was sheltered and it was facing southeast and there's a nice meadow so it was good for that. Keeping bees confined in a certain way and trying to keep them alive, taking their honey, that hasn't been my purpose for quite a long time. Really always it's been pollination of the land and well-being of the bees. You could catch bees in a basket and put them up into the hive, but by letting the bees choose, it's, in a way it's shifting our responsibility with the bee. Instead of worrying about things dying, the strong ones will survive and the weak die. And you just feel much more in balance with that's how nature is. And that's the difference. That's what I've learned, is not to get so kind of stressed about my bees. They're not my bees. Bees belong, they're wild animals. Obviously in the, in the wild, a tree, you've got the hollow and you've got all that length of tree above, which is a fantastic insulation. So I can't do that on this, but I put this waterproof membrane on and then fill it up with insulation. And you know, the warmer the bees are, the less honey effectively they're going to need to get through the winter, but also the less flowers they need to visit. So you know, in our country now, we haven't got the forage. That's why they need this more than ever, I think rolls down like a dry bag. You can access and see the health of the colony. Oh, that's really good. And you can see if you want to see if there are any varroa on the floor or if the colony dies out, you can just go in and cut the comb out. Yeah. And if you want, you can get a bit of a honey crop. All the propolis and smell of the bee will be in. So the following year, you'll just get, immediately you'll get another colony back in.
starting to lift the log. It's good fun doing this, but when actually bees choose it and go in, you know, it's really, you don't quite believe it. They'll walk about 55 feet going inside measuring, so they'll look for about 40 litres. And they'll come out and you're almost like they're scratching their heads and then they'll walk up around, up, then go back in, come back out, go back in, and they might spend five or 10 minutes doing that. And then they'll go back and do a waggle dance on top of the other bees and they'll send some scouts out and you get like this kind of frantic squabbling amongst them all on the surface of the log. And if they've decided that's the best, they make this high-pitched beep and wake the whole cluster up, so the cluster explodes, and then they'll direct like little tracer bullets when they let out a pheromone. You're looking at a totally different behaviour in the wild, managing them in boxes. And it's so much more incredible, the whole evolutionary process. They arrive like this mass, and they, they kind of go in like water going down a plug hole. They kind of and they're in. It's a very hands-off, very gentle approach to, to beekeeping. You can almost not call it beekeeping, it's bees keeping themselves. I think I learned that bees can manage perfectly well without us. What's nice about doing this is the people you meet from different incomes and how much land they've got. Some have only got small, tiny gardens, but they've got this passion that they want to put something back to help nature. When I heard about it, I sort of jumped for joy, really, because it just seemed like a brilliant way forward. That encourages me to get more people doing it, and hopefully we can have a bit of a change from just keeping bees in boxes in factory conditions. It's something that's been absolutely positive. With our time that we're in, in the world at the moment, we've got to start putting things back. At times the world can be extremely depressing, but this feels like the best possible thing.